All right, the chip of the day is lasers. You have to do the air quotes, lasers. All right, uh, so these are really old school ones, so they're great, we can take a look at them. Um, yeah, I, I, I used these things back in the late 80s, mid 80s, probably somewhere around 1985. Red lasers had just been invented. And uh, we were in the barcode group of Hewlett Packard and we decided that lasers would be great for barcode readers. And so I contacted uh, a couple companies um, in Japan who had come up with the red lasers and I had them imported into the United States. Um, they were the very first ones I think that ever made it into the United States. I think I paid $500 each for them. And that's just the little diode. That's not a module or anything. That's just the diode itself. They were super, super new. These were like engineering samples. Um, and so I, I did learn a little bit about red lasers back in the day. Lasers have well gone past my, my vintage now. There's all kinds of lasers, but these would be great. So let, let's take a look at a couple of them. So the first thing we're gonna take a look at is, um, these look very familiar. I think I had, I had some like this. this so the, the diode's inside, but there's a little lens on the front. And this little thing allows you to focus the lens so you can focus it in and out and make the, the beam uh, nice, and, nice and parallel or make it to a spot, whatever you want to do. You can, you can focus the lens. So this is the, the focus mechanism and then the, the LED is, is inside. So, okay, so let's turn one on so, you, so we can play with lasers. Uh, so here's a, here's a module. Again, this is an aluminum body instead of a brass body, but it has the same lens and a little brass lens with a with a focus knob on it. So let's. Uh, I have three and a half volts here on the power supply. I figured these are probably designed for batteries or something of like that. So let's put this one on and and uh, yeah, there we go. There's our there's our laser. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we need some nice white, some nice white. That's probably, blow there we go, that's probably blowing out the camera, but you can see, yeah. Everybody's, everybody knows about lasers, because laser pointers are a dime a dozen, and uh, yeah, that took about a decade. Uh, and when lasers came down in price, they figured out how to build them cheap, and um, all right, so uh, laser beam. There's some cool things about lasers. I'm not gonna tell you about how lasers work, I'm just gonna tell you about uh, how these things are constructed, and the uh, electrical circuit that you need, you need to drive them. Uh, but lasers are, are very, very cool. Uh, you can shine them on your fingernail, because you always have that with you. Um, ping pong balls work really good too, but if you shine it on your um, fingernail, it creates what's called speckle. And uh, if you have a laser pointer, do this experiment, you'll find it really interesting. So put your finger down here, shine it on your finger, and you'll see all this little like sand on the beach. You'll see all this little sparkles of, of light, okay? and uh, move your head back and forth and see if those little sparkles move. If you have uh, perfect vision, the sparkles won't move. And if you're nearsighted, they move one direction. And if you're farsighted, they move the other direction. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, the other thing is if you wear glasses, this will freak you out. <laughs> if you wear glasses, take your glasses off and look at the sp look at that grain of sand. And it's, it's as perfect sharp as anything. It's perfect. Um, and that's because you don't need the glasses to see the speckle. The speckle is actually happening inside your eye. So it doesn't matter if you're, if you have bad vision or good vision or glasses or no glasses, you will see the exact same thing. It'll be very, very fine little grains of sand. Um, yeah, that's, that's super cool. <laughs> okay. Um, so how, let's see, what's the next thing we should do here? Um, let's talk about the lens. Okay, so let's turn this one off. I have another one here that we'll turn on. Let's see. So this one does not have a lens. Okay. So, uh, can you see that? Uh, so this is the, uh, this is the laser without, without a lens. Let me move my camera a little bit here. Um, and uh, so it, if, you, if you look at it, in fact, let me, uh, let me take a page out of my notebook here. Uh, so, so here's the uh, little spot of light. Let me, is that gonna be better if I turn the room lights off? Yeah, um, so there's a little spot of light. You say, oh yeah, that's, that's a laser, but watch as I move it away. 
it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So, well, that's not a laser. A laser is a, a beam of light, and that's not a beam of light. That kind of looks like an LED. It just kind of spreads out, right? And uh, so there's two things to get a, uh, take away from this is uh, laser diodes by themselves expand. The light expands, and it expands differently in different directions. It, it goes bigger in one direction and smaller in another direction. And you need a lens to make a spot or a beam. You need to collimate the light. It's called collimating the light. And um, so uh, if you make a laser spot somewhere else, and it looks really good, like that first laser we looked at, it looked like the spot was really, really good. But if you got out a magnifying glass and you looked at that spot, it would look exactly like this. It would be oval in shape. It would not be round. It would be oval in shape. So. Um, laser diodes do this, certain types of laser diodes do this. So we're looking at a particular type of laser diode. Um, it is a, uh, an edge emitter, it's a cleaved uh, laser, we'll talk about that. Um, there are other types of lasers like vertical cavity laser diodes, uh, Vixels, uh, and they may have round uh, spots coming out of them, um, but uh, these have a really weird uh, divergent beam, okay? All right, so we'll talk about that. Um, let's see, let me turn the room lights back on. Okay, so, um, let's see, what do I want to talk about first? I think I want to talk about the construction of the diode first, and then we'll talk about uh, electrically driving it, okay? And um, so, we will be looking under the microscope, but I want to show you a drawing that I did first. And so you'll understand what you see under the microscope better. Okay, you'll see two things under the microscope. First of all, you'll see the laser diode. It looks like this. And you'll see another item, which is a photodiode, and it looks like this, okay? So let's talk about the laser diode. The laser diode is uh, this little tiny rectangle. It sits on a big substrate. There's a, there's a big substrate here that's kind of gray in color. And then there's this little slab. It's a rectangular slab. Okay, and that is the laser diode. And you make contact with the laser diode by uh, the top contact, which is this bond wire, and then the bottom contact, which is the bottom side of the laser diode, which is either uh, glued to the substrate or is actually deposited on the substrate. But you make electrical contact through it with this bond wire, and it, that electricity goes into the substrate and then into the back side of the laser diode. And uh, just like an LED, it's going to glow when you put electricity into it, right? But lasers are a bit strange that they multiply the photons. They generate photons and then they multiply them. And they multiply them by bouncing back and forth a bunch of times before they come out, okay? And so imagine this little rectangular face here and the other one over there that we can't see. Those are mirrors, okay? So this is a mirror and that's a mirror. And the light will bounce back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth inside this thing, okay? And then you make these mirrors a little bad, okay? So you make them let through, let's say 95, they reflect 95% of the light, but 5% of the light will come out or maybe only 1% of the light will come out. Um, and so it'll rattle around quite a few times before it has a chance to come out, right? The statistics of it coming out are low. It needs to bounce around there a lot before it finally comes out. And on the laser diodes, you make them such that the light comes out of both of those faces. Some of the main light comes out of this face. It goes, it goes, in, the, it goes in this direction. But some of the light's going to come out and it's going to go in, into that direction, okay? And you, you design these mirrors such that just a tiny little bit of light comes out the back and most of the light comes out the front. Why do you want a little bit of light coming out the back? All right. So laser diodes are not like LEDs. You cannot drive a laser diode with a constant current. You will blow up your laser, okay? Um, if you drive them at a constant current, they will just get hotter and hotter and hotter and get brighter and brighter and brighter and then burn out. They just will destroy themselves. So you need to regulate the current such that the amount of photons inside the laser diode is constant. You don't want it getting too big. You don't want it getting too small. You want to have a constant amount. So you need to have a feedback, feedback loop that monitors how much current do we have, which means how much photons do we have, how much photons do we have, and we want to regulate that. So the light that comes out the back side of the laser diode will shine on a, a, 
a photodiode. And so you get to measure the amount of light that comes off the back. So this is called a back photodiode sometimes. Um, and so you say, okay, the back photodiode, in this system, I want about one microamp of current through that back photodiode. And at my, one microamp of current, it means so many watts of photons, and that's exactly the happy spot of this thing. And I'm going to make a feedback loop in the circuit such that I always just have one microamp of photocurrent on the photodiode. Okay, so let's talk about the photodiode. It's also this rectangular square. It has a back contact, just like this one. You make electrical contact on the back, and then there's a bond wire on the front. There's actually a little pad for it on the front for the photodiode. And um, so when we look in the microscope, you'll see both of these things. You'll see this thing, it's kind of pointing up towards you. This face here, um, this face will be pointing toward you. And uh, it, the down direction, there'll be a photodiode down there, and that backlight will hit this photodiode. Okay, so let's look under the microscope, and I think all of this will be very clear. All right, uh, here is the photodiode. Let me show you a side view of it first. So there's the little photodiode. It's a little metal can and this little window on the top. And uh, here's the little window. And you can kind of see this like a little, kind of a little, so here's the whole window. There's, so there's a lens, remember, a lens in, that's external to this but this has a little window on it. it. It doesn't have any curvature to it. It's just a window. And that just protects dust from getting inside. Sometimes it has a filter on it also, but um, it's just to let dust inside. So that's the window. Inside, we kind of see this, this kind of this little rectangular thing. There's a gold, a gold section, the little rectangular thing on top of it. Well, that's the actual photodiode. We'll get a better view of it later. Okay, so this is what it looks like uh, if you just stared into it. All right, so um, I'm going to turn this a little bit. Okay, so at, at 9 o'clock is the gold post that sticks up. And that gray, so going to the right, that gray little rectangle, that's the substrate. And then there's a tiny, tiny little, um, all right, that's gonna be better. Let's uh, try to focus on that gray thing. There's that gray thing. And I think you can see just to the right of that gray thing is a little, it looks like gold in this picture here. And that's the window. That's the window that the light's gonna come out of, okay? And then if we tilt it over a bit, let's see if we can do that. So we can see that little bond wire right in the middle of that, of that little rectangle. I think you can see that rectangle kind of go up and down. It, it's uh, about one third of the width of the substrate. Um, and then if we continue to focus down, way down there, right about there, is that photodiode down at the bottom, okay? Let's see if I can get a better exposure on that. And that's that photodiode down there. All right, so I hope this makes sense. Um, change the camera again here. So the light's gonna come straight up and then a little bit of the light's gonna go straight down and hit that photodiode, which then feeds back its current to the circuit, okay? So now we can talk about the circuit. All right. All right, here's the back side of the board and we can see the circuit. It's got some resistors on it. It's got some uh, capacitors on the other side there. Uh, they were a little bit hard to see, but you can see them there. See, there's a, a yellow capacitor on that side and there's a, there's a little black capacitor on that side. There's, so there's two capacitors and maybe some other things under there that were kind of hard to see, but, but uh, this is kind of what I want to get across. There's just two transistors that drive this whole thing. All right, so how do you create a current source and a photodiode amplifier and a feedback circuit all to regulate a photodiode? Um, so let's talk about that next. Okay, let's talk about this circuit. We're gonna have a laser diode, so let's draw that in, okay. And if it's an LED or laser diode, we need little arrows that show that light comes out of this one. Okay, and maybe there's a resistor here. Maybe there's some voltage. Um, maybe there's a capacitor. Uh, 
here, and then we have a transistor to turn it on. So there we go. We can turn on the transistor, right? And we can, it's going to just do whatever that resistor says to do, okay? But we, we don't want to do that. We, have, we want to have some, uh, some type of feedback circuit, okay? So we need to turn this transistor on though. So let's put a, let's put a resistor here. So if we put a resistor here, this transistor will be on all the time, all right? So let's add a circuit over here. Okay, now if this transistor is on, then this will go to zero and this transistor will be off. So when this transistor turns off, it'll lower it. And when this transistor is on, I'm sorry, if this transistor is off, this one will be high. And this transistor is on, this one will be low, right? So it's opposite, exactly what you want for feedback. And then let's go ahead and put in a... Uh, photodiode over here, okay? So the this transistor will be off and this guy will start to turn on and this guy will get brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. And this guy will start to make more and more and more current and when it gets enough current to turn this transistor on, then it will stop, right? This, that's the feedback loop. So, that, so this is not the exact circuit that's in that thing. I didn't trace it out, but it's going to be something like this. It'll be, it'll be so, the idea is definitely there. The, the idea will be something like this. So, it don't, you know, you can do a lot with just two transistors if you, uh, if you put your head to it, right? Okay, this has been a uh, little, little fun uh, playtime with, uh, with some LED, with some uh, laser diodes. Uh, these laser diodes are around 635 nanometers. Um, which is obviously red and you can get them in different colors these days but uh, get them in infrared used in fiber optics all kinds of laser diodes now all right hope that was fun